Hello and welcome to another Demon 212 PS Vita review. Today I'm going to be taking a look at Uncharted Fight for Fortune, which if you've never played it before, it's a card game. There's a lot of people slating it over how it's a card game and not an Uncharted game. However, I'm not here to do that because I love card games and I think this is a fantastic game. However, I do need to give you a warning. Um, there's a lot of people out there rating the bundle low stars and the, there's a lot of people who are confused with that and are wondering what the hell's going on basically for those who don't know at the time of reviewing the game launched in the UK a week ago it was then released on its own with no DLC so I thought I'll wait then until the DLC comes out and save as a bundle bundle came out yesterday at the time of recording bought the bundle Game doesn't work, doesn't install, doesn't matter how many times you download it, doesn't matter what you do. The DLC does work, the DLC installed itself on my Vita without the game being there. I've tried over and over again to get the game to work, and eventually people are saying the only way to fix it is to actually buy the single game again for £3.19. So overall that's £10.48 I've paid for the game. Not exactly a huge sum, it's just annoying, and it's why I'm warning you to do a little bit of research to see if the bundle's been fixed because I buy the game again the DLC is present it's what it says there so you don't have to get the DLC again thankfully just the game again and the only other option you've got is to ring Sony's customer services and ask for a refund however I'm here to warn you of that as well because if you haven't seen any of my other Vita reviews before Mutant Blobs Attack that came out at launch there was a huge problem with it and I did the review said it was amazing but you didn't know the backstory because the backstory hadn't happened as stupid as that sounds to then call the backstory basically it took me from the time I did the review on the day after the release came out because that's when I had to do it because of the problems however in the three months that followed, it took me eight phone calls to Sony's customer support, including one on the day of launch where I had to explain to the woman I was speaking to what the PlayStation Vita actually was. Remembering this was the day after the Vita launched everywhere else except Japan, and the own person working for Sony didn't have a clue what it was. So I had to explain to her what it was, then I had to explain to her the problem, then she had to double check with three supervisors while I was on hold to check for the problem. This then was referred to me to wait two weeks, where I waited two weeks, I rang back, I was told to wait another two weeks, I rang back, and this is why it took three months, multiple phone calls, and when my phone bills came in, I realised I'd spent about £15 on phone calls to them when the game itself cost £5, and that's all I was after a refund for. So I have absolved the £3.19 it's cost me extra to do this review and I advise anyone else who's been screwed over with the bundle to do the exact same because otherwise you will find yourself waiting months and paying a fortune and I understand there'll be a lot of people going it's the principle of the thing I did it myself with Mutant Blobs Attack if I could go back and slap myself in the face and just say listen take the £5 hit it's worth it in the long run then I'd do so and that's why I'm saying it now so without further ado I'm going to do a little bit of a cut so that that way I don't have to record this again if I then do a mistake. And then I'll get on actually reviewing the game, which I do think is an awesome card game. So, that's the rant out of the way and the problems out of the way. Now on to the actual game. As you know, as I've already mentioned, this DLC came out at launch for it. It's basically you get Uncharted 1, 2 and 3 in deck form. So you can go to your options at the start and you can view card backings, avatars and backgrounds that you've unlocked or you can put them on random so you can always get a different uh, picture set up once you've unlocked some stuff, which is cool. Uh, the game options are very basic. You can have fast game speed, music and sound effect volume and that's it. You've got your card library where there's tons of cards I mean I don't even have all of the cards unlocked yet and, and there's like Faction Builder 48 cards unlocked Fortune Viewer 296 cards unlocked Resource Viewer and when you go into them you can view your treasures, your bounties, your jade carvings seriously if I I know I like to do a lot about menus because there's a lot of people out there in note but if I spent the entire review in menus the review would be 40 minutes long and you get 2 minutes of gameplay so just trust me when I see it there's a hell of a lot to do You've then got multiplayer and quick fight, which are the online. I've honestly not tried the online yet because I don't think it's the sort of game I would enjoy online. I think you've got to be in the room with a person to play it. Um, so local would be great, but I think you've got to be in the room with your friends and that to be able to see it. You know, have a bit of banter and be able to mess about and you know just it, it gives you something to do while you're waiting for your opponent. Because if you're online and you're just waiting and watching a screen, okay. 
I've been waiting a minute now, are you going to play your card? Okay, I've been waiting two minutes now and eventually people will quit and it ruins the game. I just think uh, online play for this, I just don't think it works. Um, so anyway, I'm, I've gone on to the first fight because that's like the training fight and that's pretty much all I can really do in this review to cover it is, is to tell you the basics and that way you'll know if it's a sort of card game because if you're into card games then you'll know if it's a sort of card game you're going to want to play or if it's a sort of card game you're going to want to avoid. Um, obviously just because you're an Uncharted fan you may not like this review just because you're a card fan you may sorry not review this game just because you're a card fan you may not like this game it, it's one of those if you're a fan of both then I definitely think it's worth looking at because you're going to like the source material and the gameplay dynamics but basically the whole point is you get cards you've got heroes villains and mercenaries and you place a card and then it gives you the option to randomly select a fortune card. You can instantly bank that for an instant fortune or you can apply it to the card. Um, you can tap on the card to view exactly what it does so you don't have to squint if you've got bad eyesight like myself. And by placing it on the card, if the card successfully defeats another card, you get a better bonus than if you were to uh, immediately get rid of it. You've then got... Uh, resource card which uh, there can be anything I mean this gives me more defense there's ones that give you more health there's ones that give you more um, to be fair the defense is more health it's just calling it defense there's ones that give them more attack power and that and you can shuffle them if you don't want to use them but it boosts the card so you can get AK-47s and that that give you a lot more power and the whole point is they then place their card and if it's in the adjacent way, then you attack each other, and whoever card wins, wins that one. And the whole point is, you've got to get your opponent's health down to zero. And the way to do that is by getting all of their cards defeated doesn't do anything. So, like, if you keep defeating their cards, then it's not really going to do much. What you've got to do is, you've got to manage to defeat their cards, and have enough cards on a back row. So, see, I've got three, and because I've defeated one it means they can only then have two cards there then when I do my attack my three would still attack and the one with the empty slot would be what attacks the opponent and I think it's a really good system I, I really like it it's the sort of thing that uh I've played a lot of card games over the years, whether in real form, so on an actual desk with placing your cards out, or whether on video game form, and I am actually very impressed with this, I think it works really well. Um, graphically, it's decent, but there's not much to really see, it's all very little 2D animation type things. Gameplay wise, you're going to want the DLC because they add so much. Um, and that is pretty much all I can actually say about the game because otherwise, it, as I say, the reviews then 40 minutes long to mention everything and that's worrying then. What do I mention? What shouldn't I mention? Um, as you might have noticed in the attack phase there, my new card didn't attack. That's because it doesn't let your new card attack. It's uh, like a safety system. It'll bring up a egg timer. So he's got one there, and it means you can't attack immediately that turn, and it then means that it it's not a constant steal, mate. You need that there. But uh, this should now work with this attack phase, if I can just warble on long enough, which anyone who knows me knows I can warble on, then it should now work, because he's going to attack me, but I'm going to attack him, and what I can do now is to very quickly, when it lets me, to do, do yes, come on, is to place a card there, so that'll defend me. So, it sh well, it should hopefully defend me. Um, choose a resource card, put it on there. Sorry, choose a fortune card even. Choose a resource card, put it on there. So, I'm pretty sure I've now sacrificed that card. But I don't really care, because I've attacked him. I've attacked him again. He's down to 6 health. And, to be fair, he didn't attack me. So, it's, uh, I didn't really need to put the safety net there, but I'm glad I did. It's one of those things, it appears to be cautious on this game, at the same time that playing risks, it does get you the most reward, it's how pretty much card games work, and I think it's an excellent system, and it's why I've liked them for as many years. So that's pretty much all I can say about the review. Um, musically, I haven't mentioned, it, it is good, it's like Uncharted music and that. Um, graphically I've already mentioned it's just like little 2D animations and that and I think it works well for what the game is but it's not going to blow you away as you go along you'll get new cards added to your deck um, is the only other thing I, I haven't mentioned and obviously the deck builder means you can custom build your deck to how you want it to be with the cards you've unlocked and uh, yeah that's pretty much it 
Well, to be fair, there is something I can quickly mention. I thought I'd best look into it for the review, and I'm glad I have. Quick Fight is actually when I thought it would be quickly match up against an opponent. It is but isn't. It's match up against a computer opponent you've already unlocked. When you go into multiplayer, there's the ability to pass the system around and play which is probably the thing that a lot of people are going to be doing, because if you only have a Vita, but your friend loves card games, they can go, oh, my turn, right, your turn, my turn, your turn, you know, things like that. So I'm glad I looked into it, because I think that is actually a really cool feature. And an online game, you can do it the way I said, but it turns out there is a way to play it. Um, I don't know what the word will be called. For centuries now, people have played chess by mail, and then when email came out, they played chess by email. Well, the online multiplayer on this works in the same manner. You get a time limit, so I don't know if you can say that. I've got a time limit of two days, and you can go on to your opponent, you can view their move, you can do your move, and you can play it over those two days, and you can set up tons of different games if you're a super genius, and you can honestly figure out eight games at the same time, then you've got a higher IQ than I, and uh, without bragging, my IQ is pretty high. Um, um, but it, it, I, I honestly don't think I'd be able to manage two games at the same time, let alone eight. I mean, Stephen Hawking would be probably a little bit envious, although, if I'm honest, Stephen Hawking could probably do 115 games at one time. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to go into the game that I've set up here with someone, and basically I'll now get a view his turn, and then I'll get a player, and I'm not going to show you the full thing, because you've already seen us do a turn and that. It's just while I finish off saying what I wanted to say, which... Um, and there's a nice little option that you can do this and play it. Uh, again, I don't know what the word will be, but you can play it like chess by email. But uh, it's something that it probably needs the function to be able to choose if you've got a lot of time on your hands or if you've not got a lot of time on your hands. Because I imagine there's a lot of people who are probably going to play this with a real mate over 3G while on the lunch break. I mean, my brother and my best mate work like... 2, 20, 30 feet away from each other in different companies in different buildings. It's the type of thing that they could probably therefore sit with a 3G Vita playing against each other, just sending each other their turn and get a couple of moves done every now and then on a lunch break and then maybe on a other break, a coffee break, a regular break when they go home, you know, things like that. Whereas there's going to be a lot of people who have got the whole deal on their hands, it were probably going to be sitting there not realising they've actually started to play against someone who's at work and they're going to be, oh, I'll hit refresh, I'll hit refresh, hit refresh, oh, sod this, I'll switch it off, so, and then maybe even forget about the game and automatically forfeit and that. So there, there does need to be that option there, I think, personally. But still, the pass and play option's there, which I'm glad about. And it's just one of those things, though, that... Um, some people will like this sort of multiplayer, some people will hate it. Much the same that some will like the game and some will hate it. Personally, I think it's a good enough game if you like card games to get it for the single player. But that's just me. So there we go then. That's been the review. I hope you found it helpful. I don't score the games because that's based purely on opinion. So instead, I'll leave you to make your own mind up. So thanks for watching, and if you've got any questions about the game that I didn't answer in the vid, or that hasn't been answered in the comments, then feel free to ask, and I'll help if I can. Also, if you did find it helpful, don't forget to check out my channel, because there's plenty more like this up there, and don't forget to subscribe, because there'll be plenty more to come as well. So until next time, this has been Demon212, signing off.